okay so going back to our uh, just to recap what we did in the last session we were talking about the the last point we covered the important point is that when you are pyramiding we are taking the example of TCS when you are pyramiding you should not be uh, taking the uh, when you're calculating uh, how much extra can be bought everyone understands the concept of pyramiding it's adding to your position when the market is moving in your favor okay so the question is how much can you add so we discussed this so the rule I gave you is that when you already have previously profitable positions okay and you're adding new positions you're already long some from here you're adding new positions when you decide how much to add and you're trying to see how much risk you can take okay uh, what I said is that you should use the uh, you should take it on a gross basis your gross risk capital per trade dollar risk per trade or dollar risk per unique stop level the dollar risk per trade is actually the dollar risk per unique stop level for every system okay this is defined for every system and that figure is 106,000 in our example so you are planning to enter at 2235 here the additional position and planning to exit at this level so 2235 minus 2207 is 28 dollars per share we are assuming it's not rupees per share but dollars per share so 28 you're losing per share to figure out how many shares you can buy you have to divide 106 by 28 not which gives you 3786 shares okay which is the correct approach and not you do not get to divide 159 500 by 28 and come up with a much larger number of 561 which is not the right answer this is wrong this is right okay what we are saying of course there's no real way to say that this is right or wrong but I'm advising that you don't follow this approach because here you take a lot you see the position is much bigger because you have more money to play with okay and how did you get this 159 500 you took the additional profit that the profit that you'll make on the earlier positions you put on earlier 500 shares long for the short term system over here that the trailing stop has moved from here all the way it has moved to I would have first moved over here then it would have moved over here then it has moved over here so from here to here on 500 shares you're going to make a certain amount of money okay and that money you are planning to add you added that from that 159,500 comes from adding the previous profit on the previous leg or previous lot to the uh, allocated system prof uh, system risk for each position so you have only hundred six thousand dollars allocated but you're adding the profit that you'll make on the previous lot okay and then taking this figure of 159 500 and if you divide that by 28 dollars risk per share then you're getting a much larger number of shares so i'm saying don't do that this is not to be done because then you're using the risk limits on a net basis because obviously if you do this you will lose 159,000 on the new position okay but you will make 53,500 so on a net basis you will lose 106,000 only but do not apply the dollar risk per trade on a net basis applied on a gross basis okay that is the advice I'm giving to you okay so this is basically uh, the way to right way because then this way you you maintain a constant dollar risk per stop across all trades and you don't allow the previous profits to be frittered away like this okay playing with your previous profits and it varies the dollar amount per uh, uh, per uh, per trade dollar amount at risk per trade which is not good so according to me you should do apply the risk per trade on a net on a gross basis not on a net basis this is clear this is what i mean by gross rather than net basis are you following yes okay next point we have to cover not here but here so if we have already covered this concept of pyramiding positions we already had an extensive discussion on pyramiding earlier in the couple of sessions earlier when we discussed this particular TCS example that's why we went back to this TCS the same the very same example from before some of the numbers may have changed uh, because we don't have time to read the actual high lows we are just going with the cursor values okay so the other point we have to discuss is so we have discussed risk per trade now you have understood the, uh, we, the other two con the other concept we discussed in the extensive uh, discussion on how to derive risk per trade by projecting the number of trades in your trading system okay rather than taking an arbitrary figure for uh, risk per trade okay the next point we want to discuss is system edge okay this is also a, a technical term in trading systems uh, lingo 
we have to understand what system edges you are already familiar with the system you know what is mathematical expectation from statistics yes you know what it is what is mathematical expectation in statistics have you not done this in your QT1 and QT2 or one of those cases? Probably QT2. Mathematical expectation? Yeah, probability times. So it is basically the way to think about mathematical expectation is it's a it's actually a weighted average. If you go go back to even more basic concepts, everybody knows a weighted average. Okay. <laughs> Everyone is familiar with the concept of weighted average. So when you are encountering the new concept, usually you encounter weighted average before you encounter mathematical expectation in probability, right? So, but the way to understand it is that mathematical expectation is not really a new concept. It's the same as a weighted average. It's just a, what we should call a probability. Now you're using the probabilities as the weights. Summation PIXI is the way we remember the, prob uh, the formula from statistics. Probability weighted average outcome. Okay. So mathematical expectation. So system edge is nothing but the mathematical. It's a new term that you're learning. It's actually nothing but. But it's actually can be explained in terms of old terms that we know. Okay. Which is. Google is not smart enough to know that expectation is also a word. So they are giving it as an error. Okay. So uh, now system edge we are saying is already can be explained in terms of concepts we already know, which is mathematical expectation. It's just the mathematical expectation of the trading system. Okay. So and mathematical expectation, as you know, is already summation PIXI. Okay. So essentially it is just a, and so conceptually, if you want to understand it, even even more basic terms, it's a probability weighted average outcome of anything. Okay, and so weighted average. So it's just uh, you use the, in fact, you are using the probabilities as the weights. That's all it is. Okay. So the system edge of, uh, uh, for any trading system, the system edge is defined in this manner. Okay. So here we are assuming that, so there is something called an average loss in every system, which is basically going to be equal to our risk per trade. Okay. So one minute, let me just write the formula here. This is the formula for the part we discussed earlier, okay? Um, number of losses. We can just write it like this. You remember what we did with in the previous class? Right? We did the risk. I'm just writing the formula for your reference, okay? So the reason we have number of losses per one plus one ND is that uh, Mayak has raised a good point which we should think about more but the for the moment you work with number of losses per one plus one the reason you need that plus one is that the risk management rule is that once your risk capital has been exhausted you have to stop trading once your risk capital has been exhausted you have to stop trading so if you divide by 375 and you are projecting 375 losses right okay because we can write this since after exhausting risk cap you have to stop trading that's what your risk risk manager will tell you if you're managing money for a fund and the fund had a certain amount of risk capital let's say 20 million dollars and you have already lost 20 million dollars then you can no longer you have to stop trading for the year okay for that period whatever the period is quarter year whatever it is okay so you have a risk capital allocation you lose that amount and you have to stop trading for the for the rest of that period okay every risk capital amount is uh, risk capital figure applies to some given period quarter month year okay decade whatever it is once you exhaust the risk capital figure you have to stop trading that's why you need to divide by one if you just divide by the number of losses and you have those 375 in the example that we took okay here we have a smaller number now we can go back to that example to if you remember 375 we took 500 trades so we are going to have 375 losses the reason you should not divide by 375 is if you divide 20 million by 375 and you take the risk per trade and you have the 375 losses then at the end of 375 trades your risk capital is exhausted 
are you following the full risk capital is exhausted okay some of you don't attend the previous session you will be lost obviously but you have to go and watch the video yes are you guys following 375 divided by uh, 220 million divided by 375 would be giving you some figure if you take that figure into 375 is already 20 million okay then you have exhausted your full risk capital so you can't trade anymore that's what your risk manager will tell you that's why you need to divide by one so that you have a little capital left extra you are not you have not exhausted your risk capital so you can justify putting on the next trade and after that remember you'll have no more losses because all your losses have been stacked up front so now if your projection is correct about 75 percent losses all the rest of the trades will be winners so there'll be no losses from now on yes so no more losses so you don't have to worry about going below 20 million losses right so that's the number one reason why you need uh, plus one okay all right so we go back to this we have defined this in this way this is the formula okay um, so trading for that period all right so we go back to understanding system edge very important concept in systems trading to understand the system edge if you are talking to professionals they will use terms like system edge so you have to be able to understand it it's very simple it's conceptually it's the mathematical expectation of the system so how do you compute the mathematical expectation of the system okay first understand the mathematical expectation of a head if you have a game okay if you have a game where let's say let's let's try to take a simple example of expectation uh maybe we should just take it here okay okay so if you have a coin toss okay every time let's say the coin probability of it's a buy unbiased coin so heads probability is 50 percent and tails probability is what 60 percent so we have 60 percent so we have to always write it as uh, yeah we have to write it as one minus this okay so every time you have heads i'll give you uh, you have to give me uh, one dollar so i'm writing it from your point of view every time you lose uh, every time there's a head you lose one dollar and every time uh, you th there is a tail i will give you five dollars i'll give you four dollars okay so how would you write the expectation of the system correct somebody said it correctly here 0.5 into minus 1 plus 0.5 into 4 okay very good excellent so we can see how much money you're going to make okay uh, 50 into we can just actually you've done this before very good you did it in IPM okay so system edge has been covered in IPM no, expectation has been covered in uh, IPM. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We can just revise it quickly. So everybody understands this is how you have to calculate. Okay. So now suppose you have a system in which you have. Now we already have some of the information that we need. Okay. So everybody understands how to calculate this. Okay. So we have to have the minus. So this has to be written as basically minus one. Okay. Or it has to be written minus into one where you have the one as the loss and then we have to put a minus sign before it i'm just stressing the minus sign because you need that in the calculation thing okay so now let's see if we have information to calculate the edge of this system we have represented a system over here right this system does 500 trades okay over one year uh, this system has what information do we need here we had probability of loss probability of loss probability of win and magnitude of loss magnitude of win okay so can we take since we don't have that much time i'm just going to do it as a lecture okay can we take percentage losers as probability of loss this is the frequentest view of probability you have done bayesian probability what conditional probability you haven't done that is Bay you've never heard of this guy Bayes theorem okay so that is called Bayesian probability that is conditional probability the other approach to probability is what we call the frequentist probability approach here free by which goes by the frequency so if I'm projecting a system which has a 75% loss rate can we say the probability of loss is 75% 
on average 75% of the trades will be losers so the probability of loss is 75% okay so we have that information probability probability of the loss okay what is the magnitude of the loss have we computed the magnitude of the loss can you tell me what is can you guys see at the back bottle can you see the numbers yes or no you can so we have so we we looked at the we are trying to derive the mathematical expectation of the trading system which in the in the industry jargon is called system edge it's called the edge of the trading system edge okay like the edge of a ruler okay so the edge of the trading system this is called so this is the language that is used in the industry so you're calculating the system edge so you need percentage so it's a mathematical expectation so you need percentage uh, probability of loss times magnitude of loss so conceptually understand the uh, the formula for expectation of a trading system because your heads and tails tossing game you already told me the formula for expectation will be probability of loss times magnitude of loss which is here you told me that it should be probability of loss times magnitude of loss yes. with the minus sign and probability of win times magnitude of win so we are going to since we, we told you that system edge is nothing but the mathematical expectation of the trading system so when you're doing the calculation of system edge it should be probability of loss times magnitude of loss with the minus sign plus probability of win times magnitude of win are you agreed yes, sir. should be the same and what we are saying is according to the pre frequentist view of probability if the system is projected to have 75 percent loss rate okay losing trades 75 percent we can say the probability of loss is 75 percent okay and the probability of profit is therefore 25 percent so we should have probability of loss into magnitude of loss plus probability of profit into magnitude of profit okay a probability of win so magnet so next thing we need in our first uh, uh, first term is the magnitude of loss so can you look at get based on the discussion that we had can you tell me what should be the magnitude of the loss we have 75 25 75 where are you getting 75 from 75 what 75 dollars percent no no that we have already discussed that 75 percent is the probability of loss now we need the next we need the magnitude of loss yes 20 20 percent 20 million is the magnitude of loss we are talking magnitude of loss per trade yeah so it should be 53 191 because that's what you're risking per trade are you following that is what you're risking per trade so every time the trade we are going to make some simplifying assumptions that every time you lose money on the trade every lo every losing trade will lose the budgeted risk per trade the dollar risk per trade we can call it the budgeted risk per trade because we are doing an ex ante budgeting exercise how much are we going to risk per trade so we are going to assume that every trade loses the budgeted risk okay we can make that assumption we can write it here also every trade loses budgeted risk so we say that every trade loses the budgeted risk you understand what i mean by this that every time you have a loss this will actually not be true in real life because sometimes you'll be able to move the stop a little bit you may not lose the budgeted risk but we have to make some simplifying assumptions so when i say every trade loses the budgeted risk which means the budgeted risk is 53000 roughly so 53k every time you have a losing trade it will lose this amount of 53k this is clear it will lose the full amount of 53k okay right yes you have a question can you please change the change to 250 because it gets confusing every time no but earlier we did uh, 500 we trades the rest of the calculation okay okay fine no problem so uh, nobody else has any problem we'll lose it to uh, 250 we'll change it to 250 okay it's a spreadsheet so you can actually just uh, 
okay you can uh, look at the formula you can actually you should not copy the formula you should construct it for yourself then it will be better for you okay but you can cross check okay okay so at Mayhuk's request we have uh, reduced the number of trades the trading system is she doesn't want to work that hard and do 500 trades in a year she wants to do only 250 trades okay all right so now 106k average loss is 106k can we say that probability of loss into average loss or magnitude of loss okay average win average loss is same as magnitude of loss win so probability of loss into average loss probability of loss is 75 percent average loss is 106k is that okay so far next is probability of win is what 25 percent so 1 minus 0.75 is 25 percent we have that also but we don't have the magnitude of win okay so this requires us to make another assumption and this introduces us to another concept okay which is this i think we have not covered this yet i think i've covered it before briefly um, but uh, let's put it in again once again in the calculation of system edge okay which is I'll just put it here, okay. Okay, reward to risk ratio again. This can be both ex and ex ante and ex post, okay. But target R three when we talk about target R three is always ex ante, okay. Target is always ex ante. That is kind of obvious, no? If I say target. My target is to make $5 million. That's obvious. Target is obviously a ex ante figure. It's a forecast. Okay. Uh, if you have already hit the target, you say I made $5 million. You don't use the word target. Okay. Or you say I achieved my target. So target is always that. So we are introducing, have you, I have talked about this thing earlier. I'm just going to call it R3 because I don't want to keep saying this long exp expression reward to risk ratio. I'm just going to call it R3. Okay. I think I've used it before. I have given you an idea that when you are placing when you are placing trades when the system is asking you whether you want to buy or sell let's say the Aussie dollar you want to sell Aussie okay uh, here it's asking you for the system is going to ask you for some first it's asking you for units let's say we want to just don't want to waste our time we want to enter see this is the rate it keeps on changing okay the system will ask you for a stop loss and a take profit okay so you're entering at 67.20 okay and you are you can see this is not Aussie actually we just look at it so 67.20 you are entering okay this you can change you can change the take profit to 69 and you can uh, because you're selling oh sorry it can't be 69 we're selling okay so you are going short at 67 so let's make it 62 all right and you got a stop loss of let's say this is too tight so let's make it 67.90 all right so you have a 70 point stop loss and you have a huge take profit okay so are you following what we are doing here this is just like your bracket order except that i'm entering a market order not a limit order typically in the tws we have entered bracket orders with limit orders uh, that's what it allows but we are planning to sell at the 60 we can actually make it simpler and allow you to look at aussie so you have a picture of what's going on So I'm actually projecting much lower levels. I don't know if you can see anything here. You can't really see anything. Um, little better. Okay, so what we are doing is we are going short Aussie at the current market. You can see the market is keep they keep on adjusting the market price because I'm trying to enter a market order. Okay, so there I'm going short at this price. I have a take profit at 62.10. Right now the market is 66.90, so the take profit is much lower. Okay, I'm expecting it to drop a lot, and I have a stop loss at 67.90, which is just around here. Okay, are you following this trade? Yeah. 
okay so when you are planning to do this trade what we are discussing is no it is 6719 the market right now i'm going short see the market right now is 671919 let's say let's say 6720 okay and i'm putting i'm going short over here and i'm putting a stop over here yeah okay and then my take profit is far far below okay because i'm expecting a big move down okay all right so here you can see so so far as everyone following okay we are trying to discuss the concept of reward to risk ratio this is the last time i'm going to say that i'm going to say r3 only okay r3 reward on top risk on the bottom so r3 in this case is look at the take profit 5.09 dollars and stop loss is showing in the negative okay you can just take it as a with the absolute value of the loss okay so it is 70 cents okay 70 70 fund cents okay so it is 5.09 or 5 509 cents okay or 5.09 divided by 0.71 reward to risk your profit is your reward and the loss that you might experience is your risk right is everyone clear so far it's not that complicated once you understand what it is okay so we are going to just call this r3 is this clear okay so that's what it is okay r3 on every trade is basically you can conceive of if you are using take profit orders okay if that's by the way you manage your last decision problem which is how to exit at a profit you can compute the r3 okay all right so you can have an estimate of the r3 in this particular trade you can see the r3 is 5.09 divided by 0.71 is everyone clear so far you have understood the concept it's very if you now that you have understood the concept once next time you see the word reward to risk ratio you will understand exactly what it means okay it is i write it differently most of the time in the industry people talk about risk reward ratio okay but i write it in the way that you would discuss it in mathematics because reward is on top so you just whenever you are discussing this concept with people in industry you just have to make sure we, what is in the numerator and what is in the denominator because the other guy should not be talking about something where your numerator is his denominator and then you will be arguing uh, needlessly first make sure what is in the numerator what is in the denominator what are you talking about okay is this clear okay so we have defined the r3 <clears throat> now what was our original problem the system edge we are trying to figure out the system edge okay so we have put the defined look at the formula average loss which is magnitude of loss times percentage loss all this stuff is in your notes okay you can just uh, all this is in the document file which is shared with you which you have access to so this is all there in the notes the formula is all there in the notes so average loss into percentage loss that is probability of loss okay plus so we already went through this plus average when into we already knew this 1 minus percentage loss we already know okay so we know 1 minus percentage loss because we know the percentage loss so that's how we came up with percentage wins so w is for wins okay now average win we did not know right so average win happens this is how you figure out the average win because when you are planning out the parameters of your trading system what you do is you also make a projection about the average reward uh, average r3 that you are going to experience okay so every time if you do trades like what we just showed you that 5.09 versus we can do this here we showed you a r3 of 5 in that aussie trade that we were discussing 5.09 divided by 0.71 okay you you agree that was showing you 5.09 by 0.71 so in this particular aussie trade the r3 was quite high okay so it is you can just write it in 2 7.17 okay so if you are able to achieve this if you think that you are right now it's all an ex ante analysis okay uh because you are planning your dollar risk for trade and other elements of the trading system before you start trading if you think you can achieve 7.17 r3 overall on all your trades okay if you think then in that case let's say this is true in that case what is your we are still 
trying to find out the average win. We know the average loss is equal to the dollar risk per trade. Remember, average loss, average loss we said is equal to the dollar risk per trade. Yes or no? We said average loss is equal to dollar risk per trade because we assume that all losing trades will lose the budgeted dollar risk per trade. Yes, we should not be saying dollars because sometimes you may compute if you're trading Japanese equities, you are probably going to convert your risk capital into yen. So I'm just saying dollar is to just give you a sense of that. It has to be in some currency. Okay. So let's say risk per trade. So, uh, so therefore every, we have assumed that every losing trade is going to lose the budgeted risk per trade, which is the risk per trade figure we got here, 106K, right? So therefore average, average loss is equal to dollar risk per trade. Yes or no? I need to see more aggressive nodding because otherwise I'm not able to move on to the next part. Yes. Average loss is equal to risk per trade because we are assuming that every trade is going to lose the risk per trade, budgeted risk per trade. And this is the budgeted risk because we are doing an ex-ante analysis. A budget is an ex-ante analysis. After the period is over, it's no longer budget. It's just you see the variance against the budget, right? You don't, you've done your cost accounting, right? You guys have done it in FM1 or somewhere, cost accounting or FM2, I don't know where exactly. Uh, or Manac 1 or Manac 2 or whatever. Okay. So yes, okay, every trade loses the budget. So therefore average loss is equal to risk per trade. Yes, okay. Now, uh, what else do we need? We also have a figure for R3. It is 7.17, okay. But instead of this, let's assume that this number is 3. Because I put in 3 here. I don't want to put in another number. I can always put in 7.17. It's not a problem. But uh, let's say, okay, we can put in 7.1. Everything will change. Okay. All right. So 7.17 we put in. Yes. So this is our projected R3. Because we are saying that in a, on every trade, we are going to realize this kind of R3. Yes. Okay. If our assumption is correct. So now based on the R3 and the average loss, can we figure out the average win? So R3 value is that we just did this Aussie trade. We were looking at this Aussie trade. We don't have this. I can shut this now. Okay. Uh, we were looking at this Aussie trade where we were going short Aussie. We were going short Aussie, it's around here now. And then stop loss, take profit. We wanted to put the stop, take profit at 62 something. And then this one, we wanted to put at 90. So 67, 90, short, take profit. Why is it not calculating the take profit? It's showing everything as zero. There's some problem with the system. Everything is showing as zero. I don't know for some reason it's not calculating okay okay maybe it's got uh... oh unit is not there good see now you see 5.09 divided by 0 0.71 I took is 0 0.73 right okay clear this is where we got the and then we said that on every trade we assume that we are going to uh, you have to make some assumption that's why i kept it a little bit lower at three o'clock at three okay instead of 7.17 okay because three is a lower number but anyway i think you should get gun for something very high okay like three so let's look at 7.17 doesn't matter okay is this clear you are making a projection on average you'll make r3 of 7.17 is this clear so can we from r3 and average loss because we are still struggling to find average win can we write average win how should we write average win as a function of r3 and average loss i have already given you the answer actually almost 
R3 divided by? No, I am trying to compute average win. Based on your understanding of R3, can we write R3? Let's, we don't have time. So I have to, I can't afford to make this interactive. Can I make, can I write this or not? Or may I write this? Let's be more precise and more proper. So is it okay to write, what is R3? R3 is average win by average loss. What are we showing you here? Again, that thing has disappeared. Right. What is average? We define R3 as. See this take profit 5.1 USD means if the take profit is hit after the trade is executed, you will make 5.1 dollars. And if the stop loss is hit, you will lose 73 cents. So R3 is average win by average loss. R3 is in this case is win by loss. And we assume that this thing will prevail for all your trades. This dynamic will prevail for all your trades. So therefore your average win by average loss R3 is equal to average win by average loss. Yes or no? Garotra, are you following? Yes. Sir. yes? Okay. Mittal? Yes sir. Are you following? Okay. So R3, is it fair to write R3 as equal to average win by average loss? That is what we mean by R3, right? So if that is the case, then I can write average win is equal to R3 into average loss. Yes, sir. Okay. So if I can write R3, is, uh, if I can write this, then I can go back to my spreadsheet. I wanted to compute, I needed to find average win. You'll notice average win is actually a derived number, which I normally put in one of these gray figures. So average is not a user, average win is not a user input. How is average win defined now? Yeah, into average loss. Okay, you can see it is G13 into G11 and G13 is the R3. Is G13 is the R3? I don't know if you can read at the back. Okay, first, first be clear about what it is. Okay, maybe let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. Only on this part, okay? Okay, now see, can you see 11 and can you see G11 is average loss? G11 is average loss. You can see G13 is R3. G13 is R3. Yeah. Average loss is calculated. We have set it equal to G16, okay? This is because it takes the maximum run of losers from the start. Okay. So this is equal again. This is also calculated. So if it's not in blue, it's not a user input basically. In general, if it's not in blue, it's not a user input. Okay. So I haven't put uh, brown sh shading on every calculated number, but you can see that it is actually you can answer your question by looking at the um, here. You can look at this and know what it is. You, by looking at this here, you, you can see it. Average loss is calculated as dollar risk per trade. Okay. Because what is this average loss? Average loss is here. This average loss is uh, just setting equal to G16. And what is G16? Is dollar risk per trade. What is dollar risk per trade? It is G9 by G17 plus 1. What is G17? Maximum run of losers from the start, which we have assumed is 100% of the projected losing trades. If you go back under Mayhuk's less active trading system, total number of losing trades is 188. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we'll change it back. Now Mayak has been overruled by Parul and uh, Shuchi. Uh, no, don't remember. Huh? Okay, no problem. You remember the numbers from. So anyway, that's why I wanted to keep it in five. You are okay now? Yes. 
We have kept it. Okay. So now we have 375 losing trades. Yes. We assume that 100% because we don't want to complicate matters and we want to be ultra conservative. Okay. So we are assuming that all the losing trades will be stacked together as in the beginning as a run of losing trades. As a maximum run of losing trades. Yeah. But I don't see that you Yeah, yeah. Carry on. Okay. So uh, are you following now? So because this 375, the reason this cell exists is basically to give you the opportunity to define the percentage of losers in the maximum run of losing trades, which is you see this G2 here and the G5. What is G5 and G2 here is this, this G2, this we are not for all for our purposes, we are keeping it as 100%. So the G2 may not even exist. This is clear. Okay. Are you following so far? Okay. So 375 losers. All right. So what, what were we calculating? Average loss. Okay. So we are back to this 53K. Average loss is G16 and G16 is taking the G9. What is G9? G9 is our risk capital. You can still see it at the back. Right. Here G9 is our risk capital figure. Can you see that? So the dollar risk per trade is G9 divided by G17. What is G17? G75 is maximum run of losses in the uh, maximum run of losers in the in the run of losses. Okay, which is equal here in our example to the total number of losers plus one because we don't want to blow out all of our risk capital because then our risk manager will make us stop trading. Okay. So therefore we have to have that plus one. Okay. So that we just we can justify continuing to trade. Are you following so far? So 53 K is our average loss because every loss every trade loses the budgeted risk. Yes. Any question? Okay. Every trade loses the budgeted risk. Now can we say that average win is equal to average loss times R3? We have already seen that because R3 is equal to average win by average loss. Okay. System R3. Okay. Individual trade R3 is equal to total dollar in take profit divided by total dollar in loss. Okay. But system R3 is equal to average win by average loss. So therefore our average win is equal to R3 times average loss. Okay. So you can see that by having a high R3, your average loss is 53K, but your average win is about 381K. The higher the R3, the better it is. Okay. But then the higher the R3, the trade off, it's not an easy decision because the higher the R3, see here when we were losing, we were making money. If you had a targeted take profit system, now, right now we are discussing a system with a targeted take profit. If you had, let's say that it had not reached the, this particular amount had not re, had already reached a targeted. If you have a low targeted R3, the chances of realizing it are better. But obviously the average win will be less. But if you make a more, if you have a more ambitious R3 figure, the chances of achieving it are less. But obviously every time you achieve, you're making more. So there, there's no easy decision because there's a trade off wherever, whichever way you go. Right. So um, we'll keep that. Okay. So we got what we need for our system edge calculation. Did we get what we need? What do we need for system edge? Average loss times probability of loss. Average win times probability of win. So we've got everything we need now. Okay. So we are going to calculate the system edge. Okay. Here. Look at the system edge figure. So I don't know if you can, how well you, I think you should be able to see the colors. G4 into minus of G11. G11 is the average loss. So we have to put the minus sign because we normally compute the average loss as a absolute dollar, absolute uh, value. Okay. So therefore it depends on how you do it. If you do it with the minus, if you do the min average win, if you do the average loss as a minus figure, then you don't have to put the additional minus here. Okay. You can just put plus. Uh, you can just put in two, but if you do, if you do the average loss as an absolute figure, then you have to in the in the system edge calculation, in the expectation calculation, you have to put the minus sign. 
you have to be careful about that okay so this is just an expectation calculation so it is g4 into g11 this sheet is there with you so you can you don't have to write down the formula you can look at it later on okay you have view right so you can view all the formula just understand conceptually what is being done it's nothing we are just this is what you call programming this is why i say a spreadsheet in like excel etc here we are using google sheets it's a programming environment this is also a form of programming okay high-tech programmers will say this is a joke it's not programming but actually in the eyes of the computer this is also programming you are just programming this is a programming environment okay here instead of writing this thing that's where we get into syntax once again which i explained to you the other day instead of putting this star if i write multiply in english then the system will not understand it the syntax for multiplication is star so i have to follow the syntax you can't just write whatever word obviously if i write multiplication human beings will understand but the computer will reject it for the computer you have to follow the syntax okay okay so uh, is this clear very simple nothing but we are taking g4 what is g4 g4 is percentage losers which is probability of losses g4 probability of losses into magnitude of loss which is average loss times minus minus of the average loss okay the first term the second term is probability of win which is 1 minus probability which is g10 times average win which is average win is equal to r3 times average loss clear okay it sounds very complicated but all you're doing is some nothing more than what you learned in school weighted average and then you graduated a little bit more you learned about mathematical expectation which is nothing but the weighted average this time using the probabilities as the weights okay and now you're you using you're learning another new term from trading systems lingo which is the system edge somebody asked you what is the edge of your trading system okay it's just nothing but this okay which is the mathematical expectation of your trading system and using the frequentist view of probability we say that percentage loss losers projected is in the ex-ante edge the percentage losers is equal to the probability of loss percentage winners is one minus that okay so system edge as you can see again you should understand as it's written in your notes is everyone clear so far formula of system edge. is this is nothing but the spreadsheet implementation this is just the spreadsheet implementation of this this is what I've written here this is just a spreadsheet implementation of that that's all nothing else okay so you have the formula also in your notes actually you should not even need the formula because you already know all this stuff okay all right so have we done this okay so we got the system edge okay now uh, just like r3 system edge can also be ex ante or ex post ex ante is when you are planning your trading system planning your trading uh, activity before the beginning of the period after the period the figures i will probably differ from what you projected but whatever you take the actual realized values at the end of your trading year you take actual how many trades you lost on what is the percentage of actual losses that is the ex post trading edge okay so when you're doing your planning normally you're working with the ex ante edge okay all right okay and then obviously you want the ex ante to be more conservative than the um then the actual uh, 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 the actual ex post you want the ex ante uh, calculation to be more conservative than the ex post realized values okay so we have understood reward to risk ratio also okay something else you have to understand okay i think pyramiding positions we have already covered okay there is another important calculation a couple of other important calculations that we should cover in this course itself okay now let's see um, okay one more thing i have to warn you about okay this i'm not going to spend much time on okay which is that so far we have taken very simple examples of calculations of uh, losses okay we took most of our loss calculations were done in the case of taking the example of trading in stocks okay where you're trading in shares of tcs and the pnl is coming out either in dollars or in rupees okay so it's very simple okay because your risk capital is also in dollars in this case we looked at tcs price and rupees and we assumed the rupees are actually equal to dollars and we made some rough assumptions but it's very simple because your pnl is in dollars 
and your uh, risk capital is also in dollars so you have to be very the point I'm trying to illustrate here is the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that PNL is when the PNL is in currency or asset different from asset in which risk capital amount is defined this is have to be very careful you have to understand if you are being given money to manage in Japan, if you're living, living in Tokyo, Japanese investors giving you money to invest in Japanese equities, that risk capital amount is going to be defined in yen. But if the same Japanese investor has given you a risk capital amount defined in yen, and then he's told you to manage US equities, you're trading in shares of Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, etc. Now there your PNL is being generated in dollars. Okay. But your risk capital is in yen. So every time you do a calculation like this, for instance, you have to be careful about this. What were the calculations we were doing? Remember how we are connecting position size to risk capital? We said that you are losing if you go if you go long TCS at 2235 and you stop it out at 2207, you are losing $28, $28 per share. Okay. And then you can afford to lose only $106,000. So therefore, the position size that you can afford to buy is 106,000 divided by 28. Okay, this is because your PNL is uh, this this PNL here, this risk capital allocation, because the dollar risk per trade is coming from the risk capital allocation, which is in uh, like it could be in Japanese yen. I'm giving you example here. It's in US dollars. Okay, and your PNL is also in US dollars. So there you can make this calculation. But if the situation is different, if we take dollar Canada okay if you take the example of dollar canada there could be all kinds of other things that you have to estimate okay which is we'll just take the example of dollar canada if you're trading something that you have to understand okay which is when you buy sugar in india you go to the Ghazipur mandi and you become a trader and you're trading 10 quintals of sugar you buy uh, 10 quintals at 100 rupees per kilo and you sell 10 quintals at 120 rupees per kilo you have made a profit okay in 10 rupees per kilo this profit is in sugar or in rupees Rupee. rupees okay so you can always go back to this example think of yourself like this and uh, go back to if you ever get confused but the rule is pnl is always generated pnl means when you do a trade whatever profit and loss okay pnl is always generated in we should write in the terms asset but i'm going to just ignore good english right now we don't have time pnl is always generated in the terms asset we maybe let's uh, we have to write it here because you remember base asset terms asset so the general rule is that the pnl is always generated in the terms asset in any market if you ever forget the rule you go back to trading sugar in Gazipur and you find out that your your profit is not in sugar but is in rupees and then you can work it backward that when you're trading sugar your terms currency is terms asset is Indian rupees and that's why the so that proves that the, the PNL is always generated in the terms asset no matter where you are what market you're trading okay so when you're trading dollar Canada let's take one more example this let's shut this thing now let's take the example of dollar canada i hope it's here yeah dollar canada okay so let's say i want to buy dollar canada okay let's say i want to buy 100 units of dollar canada and we can change uh, okay so i want to buy 100 units of dollar canada all right which is I want to buy at the market 3316 and I'm just going to take a stop loss example at the moment okay so it is showing you what stop loss of let's say I'm using a very wide stop loss okay so can you see the stop loss of 2.37 they are showing you the profit in 2.37 US dollars but actually this is not how the profit will be calculated okay they are actually doing a conversion in between which they are not showing you what will happen when you buy dollar canada at 133.15 and you stop at 1.3 let's do this calculation okay what will happen is 1.3 is your exit and what did we say 1.3315 is your entry let's say okay 
and these are your dollar Canada exchange rates. In dollar Canada, what is the terms asset? Canada has the terms asset. Because in the currency markets, we always by convention show the dollars, the base asset first in the currency markets. Okay. So in dollar Canada, the terms asset is Canadian dollars. Okay. So I enter at 1.3315 and I exit at and I buy hundred dollars. Okay, so how much is my loss projected loss? Hundred into one. I should put the exit first, so I'll get a negative number. So the bracket there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm losing 3.15 dollars. Okay, but you notice these guys were showing us. I closed it actually. I shouldn't have closed it. Should I put three 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 one five here? Yeah, three three one five here. Let's keep. Uh, this is acting a little fun. Okay, so let me just put it as one point three. Yeah, two point three seven dollars. Okay, why is this discrepancy? Because this is in which currency? USD. And. What did we tell you? PNL is always in the terms asset. So this 3.15 is in which currency? Canadian dollars. Because Canadian dollars is a terms asset. Okay. Now, when I exit the position and realize my loss of 3.1715 Canadian dollars, at that time, so I need to convert because my risk capital is in US dollars. Suppose my investors given me risk capital in US dollars. I am trying to calculate Canadian dollar position size. So when I look at risk per trade, because here I looked at risk per maximum risk I can take is $106,000. This PNL was also in dollars. This was dollars per share. Okay, it was not Japanese yen per share. So I was able to make a direct comparison. So you have to go through an additional step when the PNL is in a currency which is other than the currency in which your risk capital is defined. Are you following what I'm saying? So here you are generating PNL in Canadian dollar, dollar Canada. The PNL is coming out in Canadian dollar, the raw PNL. You have to convert this raw PNL into the currency in which your risk capital has been defined, which is US dollars. So you have to convert the loss into a US dollar loss. So at the time that these guys are using a slightly wrong methodology for this, but we should have a reasonably close figure. So what you have to do is 3.15 Canadian dollars is what you have lost. Okay. So 3.15 Canadian dollars is equal to how many US dollars? Should I divide by, should I multiply, divide what? Okay. We don't have time to do all this discussion, but I will tell you if dollar Canada is 1.331, if dollar Canada is trading at this. That means what? 1.33 US dollars per Canadian dollar or 1.3? Does this mean 1.3315 US dollars per Canadian dollar? Yeah. One US dollar is equal to 1.33 Canadian dollar. 1.33 whatever, 1.5 Canadian dollars. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So now, therefore, when you see these rates, you know this is Canadian dollars per US dollar. These rates are Canadian dollars per just like our dollar rupee 72 rupees means rupees per US dollar. This is 1.31 Canadian dollars per US dollar. Yes? yes. So the Canadian dollar is called the loony. Okay, just for your <laughs> just like uh, it's called the we don't we don't have the it's a loony is a bird which is there the picture of the bird is there on the one dollar Canadian coin. So the Canadian dollar is sometimes called the loony. Okay, this is just fun. This is for trivia. Okay. This will not come in your exam. Don't worry. Who is the loony? <laughs> okay, right. So we have to convert. So this is what these rates are. One sec. These rates are Canadian dollars per US dollar. I lost one. I lost three point one five Canadian dollars. So what is the US dollar value of my loss? Divided by one point three three one five or one point three. Divided by now, I think middle as we'll go with middle's answer because we have to divide, not multiply. Okay. 
to we have to divide okay because the dollar is money is is uh, higher than parity okay so one dollar is worth more than one canadian dollar so we have to divide that to, to get a dollar amount the dollar amount will be smaller the usd amount will be smaller than the canadian amount so we have to divide the question is should divide by 1.3 or 1.3315 system is very slow i should not have loaded this i don't know why the system is so slow okay we got it okay 1.3 is somewhere here and 1.3315 is somewhere here okay all right 1.3 is somewhere here 1.3315 is somewhere here so when i lose when i get stopped out of my trade and lose 3.15 the mark is the market over here or is it over here it's below it's at 1.3 so the dollar value at the time i realize the loss should be taken into account okay these guys are using a slightly wrong procedure so i should divide it by the exit at loss price this 1.3 is my exit at loss price is that right or not this is my stop loss so this is my exit at loss price so i should divide this by 1.3 not by 1.3315 because the dollar value of the loss at the time i realize the loss because the way it works is that you realize a loss of 2.42 you realize a loss of 3.15 Canadian dollars the Canadian dollar broker asks you to pay 3.15 dollars in Canadian dollars you have to instantly get that money from your US investor and at that point the exchange rate is not 1.3315 it's 1.3 so the true dollar value of your loss at at the time of the loss is equal to the should be converted at the exit price at loss level are you following yes Okay so it's 2.42 these guys have a slightly different figure because they actually use this figure they use the current rate which is the wrong methodology okay but anyway it's not a huge difference because our position size is very small okay all right okay so this is something that you have to be very careful about because you have to uh, be conscious about the currency in which your risk capital is denominated and you have to if you are trading in some other market where you are generating like you are trading sterling yen if you are trading sterling yen in which currency is your pnl all the buy sell loss profit pnl is being generated in yeah what what is that yen so if you have dollar risk capital and you are trading sterling yen you have to convert every loss profit projection into a dollar amount by converting at the exit rate now you have a different exit rate here because here the dollar is not even featured in this currency market here so you have to separately have a figure for the dollar yen rate okay you have to have a you have to make an assumption about the average dollar yen rate so the point i'm trying to emphasize is you have to be conscious you can't compare like uh, apple and orange okay so you can't add yen amounts and aussie amounts and add it together and have one total okay so you have to be conscious of the currency of the denomination okay uh, of your risk capital amount okay all right so we'll cover one more point since garvid is not here we can let the class run a little bit longer and sukriti is also not here so we don't have anybody to uh, tell her force us to finish early <laughs> okay so here i have given you all kinds of calculations you can revise that you can look at that on your own okay which is basically all the stuff is um, we have already covered all this stuff okay this is a, what is the risk per position size pos is position size into absolute of exit price minus entry price these are all formulae which i have given you for your own reference okay for studying but we have already covered all this this is all common sense stuff which we have already covered you can study it on your own okay so this is a very important point that you have to understand which currency your pnl is being generated in and uh, which asset in general terms we don't want to talk only about currencies which asset in general terms your pnl is being generated in and which asset is your risk capital defined in 
okay usually these will both be in currencies okay because whenever you trade you generate asset pnl is in current some currency or the other okay and risk capital is also in some currency or the other but we still want to use a general term of assets okay all right so these are our points i've given you which i gave you the example okay you can study it on your own we have already discussed it okay pyramiding has we have already defined that uh, it should be on a gross basis or not on a net basis this is the part that is mentioned we already discussed this okay last thing we have to understand okay very important calculation we should cover it as part of our module here we still have a little bit of time it will not take very much time okay now try to understand what we are trying to do here okay i think we can uh, just move this here i think we have already done this we'll just move it here to avoid distracting us we are trying to un answer this question okay suppose you are thinking suppose your investor has told you that i want you to achieve a certain many many investors actually many especially money managers i think it's kind of stupid but it happens in the real world money managers you'll see they'll say we are targeting a 15 percent return on capital so return on invested capital okay so i think it's stupid because how do you know i mean are you telling me that if suppose you're targeting a 15 percent return you understand what is meant by return on invested capital right okay your invested capital is very simple your invested capital is 100 million okay now if you are uh, yeah if you are talking about what is the target okay uh, wait uh, okay so now this is actually the return that we want i think here i've given a mistake here i've made a mistake here but anyway the point is let's understand if your invested capital is 100 million dollars okay and uh, this is actually the return that uh, you want okay uh, let's let's uh, try and put it somewhere uh, let's try and put it here okay so let's say i want a 20 percent return okay If I want to, if your investor wants a 20% return, okay, that means you have to generate a profit of $100 million into 20%, right? You have to generate a profit of $20 million, right? If I change this to say 29%, okay, then you have to generate a profit of $29 million. Is this clear? Usually there's a discussion that happens like this, but it's kind of stupid because uh, you don't have any control over it, but still this is a discussion that happens. So one of the legitimate questions that arises that if I'm, tra if I have to achieve a 29% return on, uh, on capital. Okay. Why I thought I made this thing here. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, suppose I have to achieve this uh, return on capital, okay? Then uh, I have to uh, achieve I have to achieve a total return of 29 million. This is clear, okay? I'm going to take a little bit of time because I want to finish up. We still have two minutes, okay? So is this the first step is clear? Investor told, tells you that I need a 29% return on capital. That means you have to make 29 million, okay? So uh, before this, we have to clarify one more point actually from the system edge calculation. So if you look at the system edge, okay, if you look at the system edge and if you look at the uh, total number of losing trades, 375, there's a concept of gross loss, okay, okay, or to, uh, total losses, okay, if you look at total losses, you can calculate total losses by, what have we done in total losses, we are saying total losses equal to number of losing trades into average loss is it fair total losses is equal to now you can see it here in the formula you don't have to write it down is it okay to say total losses is equal to number of losing trades into average loss yes right just listen to me don't focus on writing because this formula is available to you okay so number of losing trades into average loss okay now if this is total losses then total uh, profits okay total profits is equal to number of winning trades into average win okay and your estimated gross profit the gross profit i'm using in the sense of you the way we use it on the p on the pnl so the gross profits is equal to total profits minus total losses this is just like 
sales revenue minus cost of sales gross profit is equal to sales revenue minus cost cost of sales you remember from your balance sheet from your uh, financial statement analysis sales revenue minus cost of sales is equal to uh, cost of goods sold okay is equal to gross profit yes or no yes similarly total losses is equal to the same concept as cost of goods sold okay and revenues is equal to profits okay so total profits minus total losses is gross profits we can see that here it's nothing but basically uh, okay that is a different calculation of gross profit but essentially uh, it's the, uh, it's basically this you can see this okay you can have a corresponding calculation here if you take total profits minus total losses you will get the same figure 27.7 is this clear so estimated gross profit is equal to total losses minus total profits minus total losses okay now the other way to arrive at the gross profit is also what is the meaning of system edge system edge is basically the average outcome remember we said expectation is equal to average uh, probability weighted average outcome okay so here system edge is probability weighted average outcome of the trading system so on average you make 55.5 4 55.55k on average you make 55k right. how many trades are you doing 500 trades over 500 trades on average you are making 55k notice that 500 is here in c uh, g3 okay so therefore another way to write another way to write the system edge is uh, another way to write the estimated gross profit is system edge into the total number of trades here can you see that total number of trades into system edge total number of trades into system edge is equal to are you following total number of trades into system edge is equal to the uh, total profit clear g3 you can't see here g3 is equal to the total number of trades here now you can see now you can't see now you can see here now you can see g3 is equal to total number of trades and g3 into system edge is equal to your estimated gross profit this is clear yes everybody is hungry okay so i wanted to cover one more topic actually but we are already behind time so we'll have to just let it go okay so we'll cover it in the next course so <laughs> that's how your syllabus is going to be it's going to be one i don't think that uh, you know that's the way i visualize the teaching of finances the body of material is so vast and it's all common actually to all these treasury management financial management everything is common okay so you have understood this much now what is the last point one minute one minute let's just we are just three minutes over time one sec sit down okay uh, we did not manage to cal we don't ma we did not manage to cover this topic okay r3 required to have i think we can cover it okay guys give me five minutes i'll cover it for you okay then you can play back the video yeah. one minute one, one minute one minute one sec one sec one sec we'll cover it for you so you understood this point that how this is and you can see it yourself later on by looking at what is the meaning of system edge probability weighted average outcome it's the average outcome per trade times number of trades is total outcome total outcome is 27 million okay 27.7 million there is the same as total losses a uh, total profits minus total losses you can come at it in two ways okay so now what we have is basically uh, this so i'm just going to take like 10 uh, 10 minutes extra and then you you so uh, Seven? yeah Five minutes. one minute one minute just hold one second we'll cover one we'll cover one topic i think you can handle it don't worry okay you you can you have no classes after lunch no okay one minute one, one day you need a little less Okay, one minute be quiet we'll finish this one we'll finish this one topic okay so this is clear now okay so we go back now to our so system edge is average outcome system edge into total number of trades is equal to gross profit gross profit is also equal to total profits minus total losses okay all right so uh, so therefore now we come back to this question investor wants you to uh, re return 29 percent investor wants you to return 29 percent 
okay uh, then what we'll do is uh, i think okay fine let's not let's not make it because this is an important concept we'll, we'll cover it in the next uh, we'll cover it in the next course so i think i'll let you guys go now and uh, so this this basically so we'll have this as part of your syllabus okay so whatever we have covered up till now is part of your syllabus but we have covered a lot of very technical material in the last few sessions especially a lot of calculations so please make sure you go through the videos and understand those calculations okay so we have some of the formula here most of the formula are already here okay even this we have which we can uh, but we will we'll do it later on okay guys any technical question the rest of you can go so class is dismissed so i've only taken six minutes extra okay that's equal to one hamburger like one hamburger for each student okay so anybody has a technical question not relating to attendance and all that but anybody has a technical question yes then i won't close the video then i'll make sure it goes into the video so please remember that video means everything that is discussed even something that is discussed with me at the end of the class if it's in the video then it's part of your syllabus okay so now what i'll do is i'll explain that last concept to her only and then i'll put it in the syllabus okay yes go ahead go ahead yeah, so uh, where is this uh, value written in the calc file uh, the two when we multiply the probabilities also and one minute. which one are you talking about uh, when we the system edge uh, when we calculate the uh, are you talking about the doc or you talking about the sheet no the sheet this one the calc file yeah the system edge the system edge is here when we multiply the probabilities and the uh, outcomes yeah and the magnitude of the probability so where is that figure yeah, 15 g15 the row is g15 system h system h it's all labeled properly so we calculated it manually and it came out to be this so then you must have made a mistake no what is it did you take these figures into into average loss is 53191 plus 25% into acha okay i by mistake i added into average win 3813 no you can't add no this has to be my multiply you have to have the summation pixi so every time you have to do pixi p1x1 plus p2x2 plus p3x3 in this case we have only two right so yeah technical question sir what's the difference between so the take profit order is you take profit is basically what we would call slack okay so take profit order is uh, is uh, is one that is used to capture profits okay and so that is essentially in the form of a limit order okay so take profit is a form of limit order yeah it's a type of limit order so limit orders can be used either to enter positions or to take profit on positions okay so if you see here these guys don't use very good uh, they don't have very good mark, uh, terminology the, these guys their terminology is not good so you refer to the tws okay and see your notes on definition of limit orders okay so limit order basically is a type of order where the way you have to remember limit order is that it yes it will always execute it will lead to a transaction buy or sell at a price more favorable than the current market okay and then uh, so therefore basically uh, we already have limit orders here i think right we already given here somewhere we yeah, are limit orders okay so a take profit is one type of limit order but remember that take profit is a uh, is a kind of a slang we don't use it in the system the system does not understand take profits it understands only limit orders stop orders okay so take profit you are using it because you are using the limit order to take profit so take profit is like stop loss it is kind of like slang language which people use uh, which intended to show that it is meant to stop the loss and take the profit and things like that right so you can think of take profit as one type of limit order if you yeah. uh, if you uh, asking me exam the sheet the like various calculation you have to do so you will be providing the exchange rate right? yeah whatever if you are asked to do any calculation then whatever information you need to do the calculation will be there because r3 you calculate through a uh, software like to, uh, that's why i asked you to bring a calculator no? these are not like there's no log or something only simple division exponential or this or that involved here 
these are all uh, simple plus minus. Anything can be expected. Anything can be expected. Anything that is not can be expected. <laughs> Any type of your concepts have to be clear. But I have told you already to bring your calculators because you will you will be required to do some calculation or the other. Okay, you may be required to do some calculation. So therefore, any calculation. But these are all these calculations which you see. They look very complex, but they're actually not. It's just basic algebra. If you see the material that I was trying to cover, can you please provide the right to download the file? Begin practice. You can actually no no. I won't let you. Give, I want you to write the formula on your own. Like she has made a mistake just in even though it's a simple formula. You have access to view this file. You can check the formula. You should create your own spreadsheet, not to download this. You should create your own spreadsheet, and then you can cross-check against this. You have access to the formula. You can cross-check the formula. She has made a mistake just by writing instead of writing uh, multiply. She has written this. So unless you do it yourself, you create. You have to understand the concept and do it yourself, right? So although they look very complicated, they are actually quite simple. If you see even what I was trying to do last at the end, which I did not have time, okay? Which is what is the R three required to achieve the target return on investment or invested capital? In fact, I'm going to add it to the syllabus while explaining it now with the with the those of you who are not hungry, okay? So what are we going to do? Huh? With what we what we have to do is. essentially is look at this that essentially what we have to look at is suppose you have to worry about the investor has asked you to make 29% return on capital which means return on invested capital investor capital 100 million so you have to make 29 million profit that means your system edge you already are going to make 500 trades now what is the total profit we know already from here that the total profit estimated gross profit is equal to system edge times number of trades this is equal gross profit is equal to system edge uh, times number of trades why is it showing there can you see that the gross profit which is 29 million you have to target is equal to system edge times number of trades which means system edge times number of trades has to be equal to 29 million number of trades is known so system edge has to be 29 million by so system edge here has to be 29 million are you following so far since divided by number of trades because system edge into number of trades is equal to 29 uh, must be equal to 29 million okay so therefore system edge uh, sorry 29 million divided by number of trades is must be equal to the system edge so this must be your system edge okay so what else do you know okay let's uh, okay this must be uh, that's why i'm writing it in the same uh, row okay so this has to be your system edge okay now if what is system edge now let's go back to this and this is all uh, the point i'm trying to illustrate is that although it looks very complicated because there are actually many sub steps so you be very careful you miss out a minus sign like you put plus instead of multiply you'll make a mistake but actually there is no like we are not using partial differential equations and heat diffusion equations from physics and all this so it's actually just basic algebra but you have to be able to uh, do it step wise and be very careful like currency what currency is the pnl coming out in what currency is the risk capital denominated in you can't compare yen and amount and aussie amount okay so you have to be what is system edge system edge equal to minus average loss into uh, percentage percentage loss plus this okay one minus this or we can rewrite this because see what we don't know here we know that system edge must be equal to 58000 okay so what did we know we we know that percentage losers we know the percentage uh, sorry we know the percentage losers we know the percentage winners okay 25% where is it somewhere here uh anyway 25% yeah we know that percentage loss losers we know average uh, percentage winners we know the average loss because we have already computed it from this 53000 okay what we don't know is the so out of system the edge we only don't know the average win okay so we have to write average win and now we are doing again the whole modeling okay okay so uh, you have, you have to model average win as a function of the other parameters in the system edge equation okay so you just this is basic i don't know this is class 12 or class 10 algebra okay so you have to just move around the uh, terms so this is equal to se plus 
this term is equal to average wind times this okay it's all there in your notes okay or this is equal that means or at the way average win is equal to SC plus average loss times percentage loss divided by 1 minus percentage loss okay so I don't know why I've written this here but we can move this away so what we need to know is basically because see remember what is the question the question the problem the decision problem is the investor is demanding a 29% return on invested capital which means I have to return 29 million profits for him gross profit okay total profit minus total losses that means system edge times total number of trades then my problem is I already know the number of trades the percentage losers therefore percentage winners I know my average loss but I don't know the average win so my problem is what R3 should I shoot for what R3 should I shoot shoot for if I have to meet the investors expectation are you following mm -hmm. yes, okay so what are three do I have to shoot for so this has to be now therefore written as basically uh, so um, one minute so what are three is uh, do I have to shoot for this later on I have divided first I need the average so eventually I will have to write the R3 as average win by average loss average loss I already know now average win I have to write like this now now I have already written out the equation this is more important now you have to put this into the spreadsheet you have to enter this formula into the spreadsheet so let's do it okay so we are going to write system edge plus uh, average loss into percentage loss so the system edge we take let's say if we take this equal to the system edge we set it up here so the first term so the first term is so that everybody knows that we everybody can see what's going on the recording is still going on I hope yeah okay so are you following so far what we are doing okay so now we are going to write the two terms separately we will write the divisor separately so that there is no error it's always better to split it up so that uh, when you are programming into a spreadsheet better to split it up in separate cells so you can troubleshoot bet better okay so first we write system edge then we write in another row we are this is the system edge right this in another row we have to write system edge uh, sorry what do we have to write system edge plus average loss into percentage loss okay so let's write this uh, into or plus what is it into okay into average loss into yeah one minute one minute see see i also don't remember what i've written okay i'm also not se plus okay se plus that's why i'm thinking okay se plus into average uh, loss into percentage loss okay okay so into this should be this right so this is one term okay now we have to divide by one minus percentage loss so what we'll do is we will divide this by 25 percent one minus seven should be divide by one minus percentage loss is 25 percent okay so let's see if our answer is correct that also we have to check so we are getting 391 okay uh, this is our what are we getting this what is this this is average win okay this is average win okay so now this we have to divide by average loss okay by fifty three thousand dollar risk per trade okay how is this coming out so you just entered that oh okay 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 I didn't divide no this divide by C this is why uh, you guys can also help out by being attentive like Parul was at pointing out repeatedly that uh, the I was missing out the unit is it okay now okay 7.36 okay so if this is 7.36 is our then then let's calculate the system edge once again let's cross check now okay so it's 7.36 if this is our once again let's recalculate system edge so let's maybe make this a little bit smaller and uh, make this a little bit smaller and so we can bring this row in a little bit okay so let's once again against the system edge row let's write this okay so what is going to be our system edge it is going to be uh, um, let's put it in brackets percentage loss 
into minus dollar risk per trade okay close bracket plus uh, plus we have to put 25% uh, okay 25% into we have to put another bracket and put 7.36 multiplied by average dollar risk per trade did everybody understand this step okay everyone follows this step okay because actually what I have to write here is average win so I'm writing the average win as R3 multiplied by average loss yes everyone followed this did I do it correctly also because here you have to be very careful when this, this is exactly like why I said this is a programming environment when you're programming also you have to be very careful that's why you have to use comments and stuff when you learn to code in Python or C++ you have to use comments so that later on because you have to assume that you are going to make errors you will have to go and troubleshoot so you program in such a way that you can have a good time troubleshooting I mean you don't have such a hard time troubleshooting so have I done it correctly yes. that average win is shown as L11 which is your uh, R3 right times the dollar risk per trade which is R3 times average loss is equal to average profit okay average win times probability of win okay so I need another bracket here okay and uh, now it should be we don't need any more brackets right is this correct I don't think we need any more brackets so the system edge is okay so then and uh, that means uh, we have got 10 out of 10 okay so once once more let's calculate and see 58,000 is my system edge and so what is my gross prof, uh, estimated gross profit system edge into gross profit is defined in a in the sense of the way we use it in the PNL uh, statement revenues minus cost of sales okay so so total profit total profits basically okay estimated gross profits is what we have written is equal to what system edge times I am now trying to make sure that I have earned 29 million okay you are saying that I should use you are saying that my answer to my question actually the question that we were trying to answer was the question that we were trying to answer this is a holy grail for us basically we were trying to answer what should be my R3 everything else is known to me what should be my R3 if the investor is demanding a 29% return on invested capital invested capital is 100 million dollars so I have to make 29 million dollars now I know everything else so if I make 29 million dollars that means I have to make a estimated gross profit of 29 million dollars which we have defined as total profits minus total losses okay now so this is my this is the holy grail I was looking for okay now I'm just cross-checking so my question was just to revise what is another way of arriving at the estimated gross profit one is the one is to take total profits divide multiply uh, uh, subtract total losses another way to come at the estimated gross profit using system edge is what system edge into total number of trades that's another way of arriving at estimated gross profit so that's what I was testing okay so now I'm going to take this system edge and multiply by the total number of trades are we getting 29 million good so we have all become tigers <laughs> tigers and tigresses so we can all go to the jungle okay then we can become Shami Kapoor fans no, everybody will say <laughs> okay all right okay is this clear now Kanika were you following or you're eating lunch <laughs> or you can eat lunch and follow also at the same time yes okay so uh, the video can be watched everything is recorded on the video every step is shown now there's even if I have to explain it again I'm not going to explain anything different it's going to be the same thing so you have to replay the video this is how you learn this is why I'm forcing you guys to watch the videos because this is I've discovered also myself while studying that this is the best way to learn if you really want to learn and internalize it forever in your brain okay this is how you learn you look at a video whenever you're learning something technical okay you look at the video watch it for four or five minutes some concepts have been taught then you pause it 
then you revise mentally okay what has been what have I understood then maybe you may uh, you make your own notes okay if you do that 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 way it's it's more time consuming yes but then you achieve something useful in the sense that is completely embedded in your brain now you will never forget it okay but otherwise what is happening in most of the cases is you guys are studying some concepts and then you're forgetting everything by the next semester <laughs> even the stuff that is taught in the previous semester uh, in the previous class you guys are forgetting because you're well, there are two problems one is you're not paying attention and then you are not uh, revising okay so now you can see that uh, let's see what happens if the cable trade makes money so I was showing you that this is remember what we discussed yesterday you remember what we discussed that you look at the long-term system the long-term system was uh, bearish but the short-term system when we looked at it was bullish yes, and we said if it breaks this then the short-term bullishness will be neutralized that's what happened after Boris Johnson suspended Parliament and the Queen agreed to it the cable dropped okay and it broke the support so now actually I've gone short immediately when I sold one lot here and I left one order now let's see now what has happened from a system traders point of view now both the systems are aligned long-term system and short-term system are both bearish so now we'll have to see what happens whether actually now my projection is that eventually this will not be this will not cross this level anymore so this is where my stop is okay this will not cross this level and it will eventually go far below this below 1.2 now let's see what happens you can monitor cable on your own you have the charts and stuff okay guys so there's so you have a a lot of material but we have covered a lot of uh, useful stuff which you will not find in any finance textbook okay but these are all very important things for uh, managing uh, risk books okay especially when you're managing it on the uh, active risk book side if you are in asset management okay because this is how you control risk okay so you can see you should notice that these are actually very uh, these look very complicated but actually the maths is just high school algebra nothing more but you have to be very careful going step by step okay and you have to be mindful of all the uh, nuances like risk capital is in dollars I'm generating PNL and yen I can't when I'm doing my position sizing that becomes important remember when you're doing position sizing you have to be you have to look at the binding constraint is your dollar amount that you can lose not the yen amount okay so you have to be you have to make those comparisons okay all right guys so good I'm also hungry let's stop it here so any other questions any other you have what no I just clarified to uh, Piyush that I'm not deliberately not giving you download rights because I want I want you guys to work you have view rights you can see all the formulae so I want you to create your own spreadsheet not download this so you want you have to create your own spreadsheet then you can cross check against this you have to create your own spreadsheet yes okay good that I have not stopped the video yeah okay go ahead limit order is something for example if you are buying and we are not sure of the market movement is whether it's going up or down so limit order will help to get a favorable price that is less than the market price right yeah okay less than the current market price top order for example if you are buying at the time of buying we can also put the stop order so it will make sure that we are buying more than market price or what? yeah if you're buying you're buying essentially a stop order will ensure that you end up transacting at a price less favorable, less favorable than the current market yes, so like for instance here if you look at this example of cable yes. okay we can pop out the chart we can look at this example of cable okay if you are bullish let's say yes sir. if you are bullish but you think you really want to buy you're not really bullish over here mm. but you're a breakout trader yes, sir. you want to buy only if it goes and makes a new high okay. Okay? okay so you will place a buy stop order at this 2309 level okay. roughly okay. wherever so the high is okay. buying more than market price. not you're not buying more than the market price. you're buy, you have to be very pre precise in your use of words okay. you are buying at a price less favorable than the current market price okay so then sir and that and in the case of a limit order if you were bullish but you don't want to buy right here because you can feel you you have to understand all orders are based on views or what type of order you use as i mentioned before is a function of what is the precise view you have about the market and so one of the advantages of using technicals are being trained in technical analysis is it teaches you that you can form 
very precise views about the market okay. very very precise views so you can have a view that okay overall I think cable is going up mm. okay but I don't want to buy it here at 2180 mm. I think it's going to come down to around 2080 and then I'll buy it then okay. so then you place a limit buy because well first you say that I place a buy order and is it a limit order or a stop order well it has to be a limit order because you are intending to buy at a price more favorable than the current you are intending to transact let's use general language so you are intending to transact at a price more favorable than the current market because buying lower is better than buying higher is this clear now okay so the operative things you have to remember is stop order transacting at so if you just remember some keywords stop order transacting at price less favorable than current market limit order is like almost the opposite transacting at price more favorable than current market so for in that example that uh, entry price was given 1.3315 so why did it put the stop loss at 1.30 for the us and the for the canada okay so let's look at the canadian dollar example that we looked at we use a longer term chart okay so let's look at this okay make it even bigger okay so the 1.30 is roughly here and this is the current market so we were looking at a situation here i was trying to demonstrate that the pnl is generated in the terms currency okay so i was just taking a, a, an example of a trade where you are going long at say 33.15 okay and you are putting a stop at 1.3 so obviously if you go long here your stop will be below the price at which you go long Yes, sir. Because it's a sell stop. Okay. Because the stop order is meant to. So you haven't put this uh, buying stop. You put the selling stop. Yeah, this is not a buy stop. This is actually a uh, sell stop. Sell stop. Following a long position. That type of buy stop order, which is which we were discussing in the case of cable, right? Yes, sir. That we were discussing here. You buy here. Yes, sir. That is a order. So you have to understand uh, because stop orders can be used both to enter the position and to exit the position. As you saw in the donkey and four week yes. trading rule yes sir. that system uses only stop orders, stop orders. Yes, sir. they use stop orders to enter positions and, and to exit, exit positions yes, so you have to be clear about are you using the stop order to enter the position or are you using it to exit the position yeah no no in the case of the canadian dollar example i was saying that i am buying at market where the market is around 33.15 and I'm putting a stop at 1.3 okay that's what I was saying so there the stop is to exit the position and that stop in the donkey system the stop would be somewhere like uh, here or here okay at this level or this level when a new high is being made that is to enter the long position okay so that's why I said that if you're a breakout trader here on cable you're bullish actually at this point you don't have a view you you have a view only and it makes a new high and that's when you go long right so it's clear okay any other question technical question no technical general question yes paper will be of 200 marks or no don't worry about the marks the marks are not relevant 30 marks it was for a trading project so there's 70 no 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 it's not a marks marks are different weightage is different from marks the paper can have 700 marks also but the weightage one minute the weightage is 30 percent for the end term sorry 50 percent 50 percent for the end term weightage is 50 percent no no i'm just saying paper can have 700 marks also the project is of 50 marks sir no 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 there is no marks don't think in terms of marks marks are marks are irrelevant sir 50 percent is for project and for end term and rest 